welcome to the MBS Show Reviews and Discussion Podcast. I am your host, Norman Sanzo, and joining me today is Silverquill. Ah, humbug. Oh no, what happened? I swallowed a bug. Ah. Oh, that's bad. Maybe maybe a wild sotera could help. Mm, maybe, but well, that, that would be very humble of me. Uh, I, he said humbug, I say humble. Uh, you guys are himbos. I beg your pardon. Excuse me. <laughs> How dare. <laughs> I just learned the word. It was so much fun to use. I got no context for it. <laughs> Casting dispersions, I, I challenge you to pistols at dawn. <laughs> Ow, it's not done yet. It is somewhere. <laughs> uh, like noon? <laughs> it's not high noon. It's five o'clock somewhere, but not here. But anyway, in today's episode review, we got a special one for you. So, uh, Christmas is coming, and we decided to do something, well, different yet same-ish. Uh, I-, I think we covered all the Christmas specials, eh, Silva? Yep, Pony Christmases abound. Yeah, also Quest Struggles. They're, they're all done, right? Well, unfortunately, Quest for Girls is done, and they never had a full Christmas episode, more a ho- winter holiday sort of deal. There was the shorts that was around, but there were shorts, and I think the first one wasn't really Christmassy. I don't remember. No, not really. Yeah. But you know what? We're going to shift gears and <laughs> let the audience at home enjoy this Awesome holiday Christmas with, well, uh, us reviewing the 2017 DuckTales series, uh, Season 3, How Santa Stole Christmas. Uh, that was episode 18, yes. So, Scrooge teams up with his arch-rival Santa Claus to save Christmas, while Webby discovers the true history behind their infamous feud. So, yay! Uh, we're going for ducks this time. Yay! <laughs> I always knew we'd turn out to be quacks. So, before we go into spoilers, first impressions are in order. And Silver, what do you think? Well, this special went by really fast. It started off, they, they launched in the conflict right away, and it just kept going from there. Honestly, I think Webby was the funniest part of this series. But getting to watch Scrooge and Santa Claus, played by a polar bear, mm-hmm. uh, was also just really fun. To see these conflicting personalities and completely opposite viewpoints, it was it was a treat. And I, I'm just checking the wiki here, and he pl- uh, he uh, Santa is played by Hugh bon- Bonneville. I'm not always great with actor names, so uh, I'm I'm trying to check here. Tomorrow never dies and stuff. Oh, okay. But anywho, yeah. So it was interesting. It was an interesting episode. Tara, what about you? Well, I've never seen any DuckTales, but after watching this, it's like, yeah, okay, this is interesting. I might get into watching it because even though it's like, what, season, yeah, season three, I don't know a lot is happening, but for the story in general, because it seems like you don't really miss a lot. Like, there are some characters that will probably appear and be like, who is this? What's that? But I, I basically threw that aside and just watched it like, you know, it was a normal Christmas story. And for what it was, I really enjoyed it. I Like Silver said, they did get to the setup very quickly. But the way they explained the story and how Christmas came to be is actually a nice, uh, interesting twist to it. And I really liked how it end, uh, how it was in the end. Yep, yep. And yeah, uh, I didn't really notice the speed that the show was going at. Because to me, I felt like this was kind of normal. Like, okay, uh, we're going to show this is happening. Okay, cool, 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 cool. Uh, and yay, uh, we, we get to the beginning, middle, and end at a pretty nice pace. And besides that, I, I'm trying to remember stuff like, okay, um, Tara, I, I highly recommend you go watch uh, the 2017 DuckTales series because it is a fun show to watch like uh season one was the beginning of the setup and like if you are a quote-unquote doctor who fan you are going to enjoy david Tennant's rendition of scrooge mcduck and also since 
David Tennant is Scottish. Uh, he just he just played it normal. Mm, all right, well, I'll give it a watch. So, anywho, uh, if you guys have not watched this episode or am interested to watch this episode, pause here and go do so. Welcome back. So we start off the night with our intrepid heroes, uh, Huey, Dewey, and Louie, in bed, um, listening to a poem. Was it? So, uh, variant on "Twas the Night Before Christmas." Very big variant. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. So, um, their mother tells them the story of how um, Scrooge doesn't like Santa and wants to. Um, trap him and get rid of him, <laughs> and never to trust the claws. Hmm. Seems that Scrooge has issues. Very big issues. Mm-hmm. So when the kids ask their mother, "What's wrong? What, what did Santa do?" She doesn't know the answer. And yeah, this is all secondhand knowledge from Scrooge. But anywho. Uh, they hear a sound on the roof and oh, it's got to be Santa. It's got to be Santa. So their mom head to the roof and we see that the boys uh, found an alternative way to go up the roof first. A spotlight blares at a spot and the boys are excited to see a shadowy figure appear only to be disappointed that it's Scrooge. Scrooge is setting up traps at the roof to, well, capture or to stop Santa from coming. And Webby is there too, in full camo gear, but... Like the best camo gear ever. (laughs) Seriously thought she was magic and melted out of the wall. (laughs) But no, it's it's camo gear, it's camo gear. I think she's been taking lessons from Peter from the Hunger Games. (laughs) Oh man! So this is our first time reviewing Ducktales, and I have to say, uh, Silver, you, we you've seen the classic Ducktales, right? I have. Well, what about you, Tara? I've seen bits here and there back when I was young. Mm-hmm. So Webby here, it's it's not your regular Webby. <laughs> like this version of Webby is, um, let's just say she's a bit hardcore. <laughs> yeah. Yes, that's a polite way of putting it. <laughs> yeah, but I do love the change. I, I do love the change because it's quote-unquote modernizing it, but at the same time, too, it's not going for the, oh, Webby is an airhead kind of thing, or Webby is very girlish. She can hold herself in a fight. So I, I do love the change. I, I got no idea what other people think, but... I, I like it, I like it. So I'm just going to try and wrap the first part up. So anywho, um, Scrooge says that he doesn't like Santa because of reasons. And how can you trust a person that gives away toys for free? There's something wrong with him. And Scrooge gives the kids a took. Tunic. No. A took, yes. Hats. Hats. A beanie? I think it's tukes. Tooks, yes. Uh, yay, Canadians call it Tooks, Americans call it beanies. <laughs> but anywho, um, they hear uh, the doorbell rings, and I'm going to pause here. So, Silver, what do you think? Well, I'd actually like to save my commentary on uh, Webby until later in the episode. This is the typical Scrooge family over-the-top reactions, which is part of what makes this show so funny. So far, you just left this mystery. What did Santa do? And it's kind of funny, I found I automatically defaulted to Santa did something wrong against Scrooge, not the other way around. True, I mean, the nature of the show has been always, okay, this mystical figure um, tried to screw over uh, Scrooge in one way or another and something like that, blah, blah, blah. So, yeah, weren't it? One way or another. Gonna get you, get you, get you, get you. So it's just seeing everyone uh, being silly and o- and over the top. That's the funnest part. And yeah, the, the setup here is pretty uh, tame. Uh, we get to see the boys react. We get to see Scrooge react. We got to see Donald and the kid's mom react. So yeah, I mean, it's okay. 
Uh, Tara, what about you? Well, I can't really say much either because it's basically the setup of the story. I also want to save my full thoughts on Webby. But for what it is for the setup right now, it's, it's still pretty interesting because it makes you wonder, what did Santa do to Scrooge? Who's in the right and who's in the wrong? True that. Anyway, uh, I'm going to carry on. So, Scrooge and Webby head down the door, getting ready to give the smackdown to whoever's at the door. And when Scrooge opens, it's Santa! Oh, ho, ho, ho. There he is in all his glory, fainting on the floor. What? <laughs> oh, wait, what? Santa's dead? <laughs> and I, I, I love this scene where... Webby, all serious face, while Scrooge is aghast. Um, Scrooge putting down the grappling hook that Webby has, and only for Webby to raise up a sword. <laughs> I just love that. Like, okay, what? And we get to the intro, and the intro is a, a pretty cool rendition of the DuckTales theme song, but in Christmas form. So, yeah, if you want to get another earworm, go listen to this song. <laughs> Yay, I'm just going to skip. <laughs> so, anywho, we get back to the uh, manor and we see the kids poking Santa, asking him questions and whatnot. And the kids are so fascinated with Santa. And maybe he's just distrustful of him. Like, what did he do to make Scrooge despise him? And, well, uh, I'm just going to skip a few parts here and there because, well, if I were to just retell the whole story, we'll be here for a while now. So anyway, uh, Santa is here to ask Scrooge for help because uh, he wants him to help him to save Christmas. And the boys are excited, Webby is doubtful, and Santa pleads to Scrooge. And Santa says, um, please help because this is for the kids and whatnot. And Scrooge begrudgingly helps Santa. The kids are excited and wants to go along. But Scrooge only picks Webby for this mission. And well, yeah, they go around the world to send or deliver presents to the kids. Santa retells the story of how... They both got to know each other and, well, uh, the, <laughs> this is an interesting story because, well, uh, at the very beginning, before the dawn of Christmas, I, I'm i so confused with the timeline here. But anywho, um, Scrooge is going door to door selling coal to people because, well, it's the winter and people need coal to keep warm. That's a foreign concept for me. And nobody's buying it because Scrooge is a very terrible salesman. And he goes on to the next house, meets up with Santa and helps him pull a well, pull the sleigh. And Santa goes to the same house and somehow gets in by offering presents. And they just hang out and, well, Santa and Scrooge makes a deal and become partners in, well, delivering presents and coal. Am I right, Silver? Yep, pretty much. The, they form those unlikely alliance. And I, I like that part. Like, wait, what? Scrooge and Santa became partners? And Santa here is very optimistic, while Scrooge is a realist. So... Santa just says, okay, we can deliver all the goods to you before Christmas. And Scrooge is just like, wait, what? No, we, we can't. Like, that, that, that's virtually impossible. And we go back to the present. And in the present, we see Santa with his sleigh and the reindeers and a crystal of sorts. Hmm. Moving forward, we see a montage of Webby and... Scrooge sending presents from house to house. And that's pretty cool. And also an unlikely kid gets a present too. Um, that's one of the Beagle Boys. 
and sent a soup in to save the day because, well, if not, Scrooge and Webby would have to fight them off. That's not great. Am I missing anything? Uh, let's see. I think that I forget if it's a little later. They say, why do you do it alphabetically <laughs> rather than by country? Uh, yes, yes. So <laughs> this is a good question. Yeah, Scrooge. You, sorry, uh, Santa, you, you're wasting time. So what Silver is alluding to here is that Santa is going down the list alphabetically. And if the person is, let's just say, Silver is from the US and Terra is in Canada, the, the lo most logical thing is to cover North America first. But no, 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 no. Uh, Santa will go to Silver and then go to whoever is between S and T and then goes back to Terra, which might waste a lot of time. <laughs> so, yay! Scrooge suggests, why don't you use, why don't you send presents via country? That will save you so much time. And Santa agrees. Hmm. So we get another backstory about how in the world they can travel around the world in 24 hours. This is a backstory. Uh, Scrooge has a map that shows the Feliz Navi Diamond. Yep. So it is said to slow down time or yeah slow down time for one day and before they could advance further they are attacked by reindeers oh no that's bad and Santa just calms them down with jingle bells yay now they are calm and cool how am I going to do this because there's a lot of flashback cutting through it's basically two stories in one episode yeah, okay, I'm just going to continue on with the Feliz Navi Diamond. So they go into the cave and they see the Guardian. Santa thinks, oh, you know, I could talk my way into... I, I could talk my way around this and let the Guardian give me the uh, Diamond. Uh, no, no, the, the monster or the Guardian really doesn't want to give the Diamond to Claus. Scrooge comes in with a flying reindeer... And somehow, Santa managed to grab the diamond and it stops the monster or guardian from attacking them. But in actuality, they just slow down time. Wow, that's pretty cool. So I'm going to pause here. So Tara, what do you think? There's like two stories in one because you got the flashback and you got what's currently happening. So for the flashback, I do like how it's it's not really uh I I don't know if it's the actual reason why Santa puts coal, but I do like how they put a little story behind him, behind the coal. How it's like, oh okay, Scrooge is the reason why there's coal. Then Santa got the idea from him, and he and people don't get anything else. Or I don't know, I don't know if that's the original setup they're trying to go for, but that's the way I kind of see it. And I I also like how actually um. Webby, when she goes through the gifts and she's like, who's this one for? And then she, uh, she checks it. And instead of being something so girly, like a doll or anything like that, it's like uh, an action figure. I forget the name of it, but it sounds like something a guy would have. And it's like, okay, see, now there's something I like. It's not the typical, you know, something a girl wants where they want a doll or dollhouse or anything like that. They This Webby wanted an action figure. And it's like, yeah, that's a good change. You know, I think what Webby wanted was a crossbow. And that's what she got. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I thought it was an action figure. Yeah, it ain't no action figure, man. Webby's hardcore. And I do love the little pun with the diamond, the Felice Navi diamond. And I'm just like, wow, okay. <laughs> they went there. <laughs> yep. So... I, just, I just basically like how they have everything set up with the diamond, how... Oh, Santa delivers all these gifts because he has this special diamond that slows down time. It's like, okay, that's a pretty cool story. And he's got the flying reindeers as, uh, well, they were originally bodyguards. And then once once he jingled their bells, and a little nudge there. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> I'll deck your halls. <laughs> yeah, once he did that, they're like, oh, yes, I like this guy now. <laughs> yes. All right. And what about you, Silva? Well, like you say, jumping back and forth between stories, 
they managed to do it in just a way that it never feels like one is intruding on the other. You get an update on how they're doing in the present, which, and then an event happens that reminds them of the past. And so it flows very well, very smoothly. Much better than, say, a DC Universe movie. Oh, which, one, which one you're talking about? Oh, Superman Man of Steel, Aquaman, you name it. Ah, the live action movies. All right. Yes. Didn't we had the same problem with ponies before? Hmm, having intrusive flashbacks? Yeah. Or was it two stories at the same time? Because I remember complaining about it. I'm not sure is it uh, if it's the comic or if it's the series. Hmm. I remember complaining about it, but I don't remember which one. I'm afraid I'm drawing a blank at the moment. Yeah, I got nothing. A little blankety blank. It's all good. But in any case, uh, I too took note of the scene where, where Webby can note a crossbow just by shaking the package. <laughs> and, and But how easily her loyalty is bought. <laughs> oh, Apparently yeah. it's a gift for knowing what you got just by shaking the box. I mean, you know, there's there's a lot of backstories that need to be told about you, Webby. And I, I'm guessing you guys are going to hold your tongue until the end, correct? Well, there's a character coming up who will be a contrast to dear old Webigail. Ah, uh, all right. Is that all silver? Because I think we're almost about to reach the character you're talking about. Mm, just that it, it's fun to see, oh, yes, these reindeer that everyone claims to lo- love and be so part of this holiday. Yeah, they tried to kill Santa. No, they tried to kill Scrooge. They were cool with Santa. <laughs> well, they they attacked them both at first, but Santa has this weird ability <laughs> this voodoo that he do so well yeah and that's jiggling balls i mean jiggling bells yes rub your bells all over them <laughs> god but anywho let's move on uh in the next scene uh is the last house and scrooge is going to deliver it himself so webby just notes that hey Santa, you and Scrooge work well together. I mean, what happened? Like, what was the reason for you guys to, well, kind of fight? What was the reason? And in the flashback, we see that Scrooge has everything mapped out. Okay, from uh, where to head and also uh, send, uh, standing by carrots for the reindeers and whatnot. And Santa talks to Scrooge about, you know, uh, how about we go on Christmas Eve so we can send we we can surprise the uh, children with presents? And Scrooge says that's a terrible idea. How are we going to get paid? Like how am I selling my calls to this children stuff like people? How how am I getting paid? And Claus here just says mm, I was thinking we could give it for free, and Scrooge here flips and says, either you do it my way or we don't do it at all. And Santa picks none at all because he feels that what he's doing here is right and what Scrooge is offering is not. And they go their separate ways. And here Santa thinks about it and oh god what have I done and how am I going to do this and well we did miss a few parts in the very beginning because when they were hanging out in a cabin it seems that the cabin is full of elves yes so the elves are willing to help Santa and well Scrooge and Santa went their separate ways but Santa always has this soft spot for Scrooge because, well, he he appreciates Scrooge and wants to be good friends with him. And Santa says, okay, after this one, there's going to be a last house and that's going to be the Scrooge Manor. And after that, well, I'm just going to go home and stuff. And Webby checks inside the sack, but there's a bunch of presents. And when Santa looks inside the sack and realizes what's going on, It seems that, oh no, Scrooge has been a very, very naughty boy because 
he has been giving coal to people with invoices. Oh god, no, that's terrible. We cut to Scrooge who entered through the chimney and he sees the place it's all decked out in, well, Christmas stuff, but the house itself is a bit run down and the place looks like it could really use a great makeover. He sees a child shivering in the coal and when Scrooge tries to cover a blanket on her, the kid gives him a right hook. Uh, the kid realizes, oh, this could be Santa, says he, she's sorry, and Scrooge gives the kid a present. And the present is coal! The kid, not realizing what this means, dress the present up as a doll and plays with it. Scrooge says, kid, if you're cold, you should just put the coal into the fire and you can be warm. The kid doesn't want to because, oh no, if you do that, my doll will be perished and gone forever. Oh no! Scrooge realizes what he's done and says that, oh god, I messed up big time here. I really messed up big time. Claus comes in really badass and scolds Scrooge about it and also gives a doll that she really wants to the girl. There's a bit of bickering here between Claus and Scrooge saying, oh, how could you let me ruin Christmas and stuff? And they realize that if they work together, they could solve the problem. But with the given time that they have or with the time that they have, they couldn't really f do the trip again. But Scrooge says, you know what? Who says we have to do this alone? And we are introduced to the group where each uh, heroes or each character has right one of the reindeers and head on their merry ways to save Christmas. Yay! Much awesomeness. We, we see Launchpad here trying to crush the reindeer. Uh, Launchpad with his crush. <laughs> but Mrs. Bigley says, no, bad Launchpad, bad. And we see that uh, everything is done except for, well, one more present that Santa has for Scrooge. When Scrooge opens the present, uh, there are two jingle bells that says McDuck and Claus Delivery. Scrooge, uh, Scrooge likes it and gives a gift to Santa. And when Santa opens, it's a, what you call this, uh, key? Yes. Santa just says, oh, um, that's cool. I mean, uh, if I have a car or something like that, I, I could open it. And when they reach to the McDuck Manor, San Scrooge tells Santa to press the button and it unlocks all the traps at the McDuck Manor. And with that, Santa and Scrooge are friends now. Yay, much awesomeness. And I think that's the end. Yay, much coolness. Am I missing anything? No, uh, Event-wise, event no. And with that, well, I'm going to wrap it up. Episode ends. Yay. Silver, what do you think? Final thoughts? Well, like I said, I went into this somehow thinking that Santa was less of the good guy than he put on. I mean, usually that's how this goes. They get involved. There's a character who seems really nice, but oh, whoop, he's a surprise villain. Kind of like in Darkwing Duck. But no, Santa really is that kind. And it turns out it's Scrooge who has really big problems. Like... Wow. Wow, guy. The hero of the show. You undercut your partner at Christmas. Not really. Te I mean, technically he wanted to make a buck. Uh, it's kind of sent that it's undercutting Scrooge. I'm talking more about how he didn't deliver the presents and instead delivered his own thing. With an invoice. <laughs> See, this is where um, the dual storytelling thing is kind of messing up with my brain because uh, Santa was the one that screwed Scrooge. Not S Scrooge, but when you go to the present, ah, uh, yes, he he did that. Yeah, Scro Scrooge, Scrooge, Scrooge is a jerk, yes. But then we have this young girl who is screaming, one, stranger danger, which <laughs> I find very odd to hear in a, in a show aimed at family. She is what Webby used to be. Oh, yeah. Innocent, emotional, 
uh, girly. I guess it's one word to describe it. She's like, no, I, lo- I love this doll already. Please don't hurt him. Her. As much as I understand why Webby was modernized to be more of a firecracker, although many argue she's just a clone of Mabel from Gravity Falls, I understand why they made her this way so she could, in a way, compete for attention with the more, with the louder, more aggressive uh, members of the cast. But I think there's some value in a character who provides the opposite viewpoint to Scrooge and the others. A character who's all about innocence and, and being gentle and kind. That maybe in an effort to resist the stereotype of a female character, in some ways you abandon some very core, uh, emotionally healthy expressions. Because Webby, very often you could say she's not right in the head. <laughs> uh, old Webby, new LB. Uh, new Webby. Ah, yeah. Now, although I should also add that Webby has had moments where she has more mm, feminine feminine ideals, especially in her friendship with Lena. So it's not as though this is all or nothing. But seeing this little girl who is basically a transformative figure that redeems Scrooge, that is sort of a testament that, you know, you don't have to be the most uh, aggressive or loudest character to really have an impact in the story. You might not get celebrated, but you will still have a a very big impact. I also think it quite uh, hilarious when she, when Santa comes storming in and you're genuinely afraid of him now. It's like, Oh, right. He's a polar bear. I forgot that. But the little girl's like two Santas. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, uh, the, the the scene where Santa just storms in angry, like, wait, what? Uh, the, oh. th- that's awesome. And at the same time, too, Scrooge says, wait, what? You fake your own injury? Why, why did you do that? You could have stopped me from ruining Christmas. Oh, you forgot to mention how he pointed out that Santa was lying. So you, he uh, was basically singing Deck the Halls and fa la 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 liar. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean... <clears throat> Uh, this this uh, the, the episode itself has really awesome moments that I admit that I skip just to save time. But if we go through a fine tooth comb, we we find little details that are so much fun. Uh, anyway, still any more anything more to add? Because I think there's more, right? Honestly, there there's still the brief character flashes. Poor Donald has been taking plenty of lumps throughout this episode. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I'm purposely avoiding saying uh, the uh, Huey, Dewey, and Louise mother's name just because, uh, well, her existence here is already a spoiler. <laughs> so I'm just not going to say the name because, well, Tara needs to watch the show. So I'm just going to leave little bits of pieces of mystery. Ooh. Yes, because oh, I have mystery. a few questions that I've seen. Well, only one, really, really, and that's... Okay, maybe two. And that's, who is the female duck, and why does she have a robot foot? Ah, that is a good question. Mm, yes. Don't, don't want to give too much away. Yep. <laughs> well, the obvious one, I already said who the female duck is. I mean, that's already obvious. Yeah, that's right. But anywho, uh, let's see. Nothing more to add, Silva? Nope, I think I've I've reached my end. Uh, right then. So, Tara, what about you? Well, I really like this episode. Like I said, I like how it was a different story. And I actually thought that uh, in this universe, I mean, the title says How Santa Stole Christmas. I also, I too also thought, you know, it was going to be one of those things where Santa is nice to everyone, but he's a complete, um, that's a polite way of saying this. I'll say, uh, jerk. I'll say he was, yes, that's it. That Santa is nice to everyone, but he's a jerk to Scrooge. And it's like, you think Scrooge would be the bad guy in this story, how he's trying to get on the nice list and he's trying everything, he's trying to pay Santa, he's trying to do all this stuff. But no, you find out later on that Scrooge is uh, the bad guy and Santa's the good guy. So it's like, ah, oh, I see what you did there. You put the title thinking Santa's going to be the bad guy, but we were wrong. I do like the twist. The twist is pretty awesome because, well, Scrooge screwed over almost everyone just for his greed and I, I do like how Webby points out that 
Nobody uses coal anymore. It also did touch on their immortality. Ah, yes. Do, do you remember how Scrooge got his immortality? I don't remember. I don't know if they've ever explicitly said how. We know from another episode that he, he bestowed it on another couple. Hmm. Do you remember? Ah, man. Like, it's been a while. What happened? You remember? Well, we got to meet his, Scrooge's parents. Ah, oh, yeah, damn. <laughs> Dad day, <laughs> and they're all resentful. Webby's catatonic shock at all she could learn, but apparently Scrooge built some sort of hex into their home that made them live forever. He just somewhere in his journeys he discovered immortality, and I guess so did uh, our our dear Santa Claus. Different paths, the same way, same destination. Okay, I I wonder, I, I wonder we keep each year, and I'm I'm just. Reading something that's very interesting because okay, um, uh, somebody asked, "Is Scrooge immortal?" And someone replied with, "No, the writers have confirmed he's not immortal, but he has gone through quite some experience in life. Sorry, experience in his life, which has extended his lifespan. One of which has apparently been stuck in a." timeless dimension around for around 50 years and in the 87 cents solution Scrooge nearly dies what's, what's this? This, this 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 sign with death wow uh, so technically he's not yes no what I'm so confused well it, let's consider the great mystery that is Scrooge McDuck and his lifelong adventure which is apparently one heck of a long life mm-hmm that's going to be interesting, yes. So, <clears throat> uh, what else? What else? Uh, so, I'm guessing, Terry, are you done? I'm all done. All right. Uh, as for me, I like this one. <laughs> uh, I did not expect this to go this way because um, previously we had a... Sorry, uh, DuckTales had a another Christmas special where it was a retelling of... What was the story again, Silver? You remember? Mm, not sure I do a retelling or a, yeah it's something to do with Scrooge too mm, sorry it's not ringing a bell a uh, Christmas Carol yeah a Christmas Carol oh well there's the ghost of Christmas past taking him back to see things yeah so that, that one there although that was no sorry? that was more for Dewey mm, yeah because that one there too was another interesting twist because the ghost wants to haunt S Scrooge. You know, Scrooge. And uh, what was Scrooge known for? Being a, a curmudgeon. But no, no. Uh, this version of Scrooge loves Christmas. So, oh wait, we, we accidentally uh, stalked the wrong person. Oh, our bad. <laughs> that was fun too. Uh, but where was I again? Yes, uh, I, I decided to pick this one because it's a lighter story. It's a lighter story. And it was fun um, with the girl, Jennifer. She was, you know, just there for me. I, I didn't really notice anything. But uh, the way that you mentioned she was a callback to classic Webby, that was pretty cool. Other than that, uh, this, this was a fun watch. This was a really fun watch. Alrighty then. So anyway, um... Is that all, guys? Anything more to add? Nothing no. for me. Nothing for me, either. Alrighty then. So, anywho. Uh, technically, this one is going to be a special, so there's no next week what's going to be on. But, yeah. um, I I'm just going to say to everybody who's listening to this, thank you for listening to the show. Thank you for supporting the show in any way you can. And Merry Christmas, guys. And have a Happy New Year. Anyway, let's wrap things up. If you guys have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at imgmail.com. You can also reach us on the Twitter's. The show's Twitter account is at MBS Show. And my personal Twitter account is at Norman Sanzo. Silver, where can the good people find you? Oh, lots of places. You can find me on Twitter and uh, DeviantArt under MLP Silver Quill. You can support my comics and videos through Patreon or Ko-fi under Silver Quill. Uh, do a search on YouTube, Silver Quill, or After the Fact. You'll find me. And on Wednesdays of a new comic, I'll be on Equestria Daily posting a review. Yay, go check him out, guys. 
Tara, where can the good people find you? Well, the good people can find me on Facebook, DeviantArt, Twitter, or YouTube under the name Tortero1324. Or they can just do a Google search and I'll be on all platforms, including my Patreon page. Awesome, awesome. Guys, go <laughs> check Tara out too. So, anywho, and also please subscribe and read us on iTunes, YouTube. Don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date and stage your radio and also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on funnylive.com. Links are in the show notes. If you'd like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com slash the MPS show. With every support, you get a week's early access to the review and discussion podcast, exclusive and deleted content, and a huge thank you from me. Talking about thank yous, I would like to thank Lucky Knight, Jeffrey, Myself Black and also Tristan. Thank you so much, guys. You are great. So anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo. I am the Silver Quill. And I am the Torterra. And we'll guys catch you next week with another fun episode of the MBS show. See ya. If someone does try to break into your home via chimney, go for the knees. <laughs> but don't forget to wish them a Merry Christmas. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's Christmas. Yep. Uh, b- b- uh, no joke for Christmas. You guys got, you guys got anything? <laughs> it's 2020. I can't joke about Christmas. I'm already sad. Oh. <laughs> the whole go for the knees is the best I can offer, man. Yeah, but still, uh, I, I can't wait to get presents. And by the way, Silva, I'm sorry for the D-Day. Yours will come soonish. Well, I've delayed in getting your stuff to you as well, so we're all even. Yay! Well, I've delayed to get you guys anything, because I didn't get you guys anything, and I feel a bit bad for it. <laughs> nah, nah, man. Nah, nah, nah it's all man. Good. It's all good. It's, not comp- it's no competition. It, it, we, we are not involved in the war that Silver has with uh, Sweetie Bloom, right? Yes, our, yes. our war of gifts. Yes. So we are not involved, unless we want to be... <laughs> Which technically for oh, me, I, I think I might have gotten involved now ever since Friday. Uh, I mean, yeah. yeah, Friday. Yes, yes, it's LA for you, Sonny. <laughs> uh, technically for me, I can't be involved because the exchange rate is going to kill me. <laughs> well, we'll see how the future unfolds. Yes, let's see. Anyway, bye bye. And happy holidays. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas and happy hearts warming.